Hi and welcome to vlog number five, me learning to play the harp. And you might remember that my journey with this instrument started a few weeks back when I got a, a, an email from my friend Frank in the US telling me he was starting to learn to play the harp. He got himself a harpsicle, which is a, a small Celtic harp made by Reese Harps uh, in Indiana, in the States. And um, I like the look of that and I, as you know, if you watched some of my other vlogs, I sort of got into it very quickly and ordered a harp from a company in this uh, country and it came and it was broken. Um, so I had to go back and I'm waiting for them to build me another one. That one's got 29 strings. To uh, get me up and running, I bought a little 12 string uh, cheap harp from Pakistan and that was okay for a couple of days, but I very quickly outgrew that, so I've sent that back as well. So anyway, a week ago, I was looking on eBay and I saw this harp on eBay and it was a sharpsicle, I like my friend Frank's. I'd actually vowed to myself that I'd never buy another musical instrument on eBay because it's nearly always a disaster. Anyway, I put in what I considered was a reasonable bid and eventually I won it. And so it was with fear and trepidation that Jenny and I drove down to Sidcup in Kent, which is across the River Thames, on Saturday, which was a couple of days ago, to pick the thing up. We actually bought it from a cash converser's shop, which if you don't know what that is, it's a, a place where you take your unwanted stuff, if you're short of money, and they give you uh, a pretty small amount of cash for it to sort of tide you over. You can pawn it so you can reclaim it. Um, I'm sure you know the kind of shop I'm talking about. And that, having said that, the people in there were very nice. And when we got in there, uh, there was my bright blue harpsicle, sharpsicle, um, on the stand. Uh, everyone was admiring it and I was very glad to be able to pick it up and take it away. Let me show you what it comes with, first of all. Um, we have a, a very nice cover with this embroidered um, harpsicle logo and a nice big pocket here for music books. And a, uh, it's got a... Um, a carrying strap and there's even a uh, compartment at the top for putting the stick in. If you don't know what the stick is I'll show you that in a moment. But it's got a decent cover. The good thing about this harp is that it's portable so if I do take to it and I want to take it out with me I can. The one I'm having made I couldn't because that's a floor standing harp. Well I could but it's a bit too big for that. There was a pickup attached to the, um, the strap button, one of the strap buttons. Fairly cheap affair, but with a decent quarter inch jack socket, so that's something I might try and use, just attached by a blue tack. I've taken that off for the moment. A um, couple of books, very famous Teach Yourself to Play the Harp by Sylvia Woods, book which I know Frank has got. And this book, which is a book about improvisation by Linda Cook and Broad. And there's a, a DVD, CD at the back with some little videos on. So that was a nice, it's always nice when you get a few books, and especially when you're starting an instrument. And it came with a Pretty decent uh, guitar strap. You can strap the thing to you and stand up, but you don't care about any of that, do you really? You just want to see the harp. So let's go for that. And here it is. And it's a pretty attractive thing. On the downside, there are a couple of knocks. If you look at the top here, um, it hasn't been particularly well looked after. There are a few marks on the back here, as you can probably see. So whoever had it, sadly, didn't look after it. I've actually written to Reese Harps in the States, asking them um, the best way of touching in those bits of paint. They may even send me some paint, you never know. I'm guessing these are sprayed. The one lovely thing about this is that it's so lightweight. Um, the stick, of course, that attaches at the back with this wing nut is for putting uh, across your legs. So you put it across your legs like that, tip the harp back and that stabilises it. The base model of this is called a harpsicle and it's basically this 26 string harp doesn't have these levers, I'll explain about those in a minute if you don't know what they're for. But this is called a sharpsicle because it has these sharping levers and those are on the C's and the F's so you can raise them to C sharp and F sharp respectively. So apart from playing just in the key of C major or A minor, you can play in G major and D major 
and you can play an E minor and B minor, the relative minors of those three major keys. So you've basically got six keys as such, but probably with a bit of fiddling around, you can play other keys as well. Um, let's give you some specs. It's um, six and three quarter pounds in weight with the stick attached. So it's very lightweight. And that's about the weight of one of my uh, Hona Erica Melodian, so not, not that heavy. I'm guessing I could stand up with a strap on this quite comfortably. The maximum height is 37 inches up to the tip here, so just over three feet. And from back to front, it's nearly 20 inches at its uh, widest part, 19 and a half inches, and it's five and a half inches across. So um, it's not a big harp by any means. Bigger than my little 12 string, of course, but not, not that big. This stick is 17 inches long and it's about three quarters of an inch uh, wide. So that gives you the, the, the feel for it. Because sometimes when you're looking at a video, you can't really sort of feel uh, the dimensions of something. So that, that's it. So it's, it's small, it's lightweight. It's a beautiful color. I'm actually pretty sad that whoever had it mistreated it and chipped it around a bit, but there you go. People are like that, I'm afraid. I'm not, I love to look after my instruments. And if I can uh, get the paint job done, I will. I have to say, it's beautifully put together. All the joints look really neat and tidy. You can see this one here. Really lovely, it's beautifully done. It has a guitar strap button here and uh, up here as well. So you can fit a guitar strap, and it, as I say, it came with one, but at the moment I've found that it's better just to um, rest it on my legs and tip it back towards me. Um, I'm sitting on a lower chair than, uh, than I normally sit in uh, for these videos, because obviously you need to get your feet firmly on the floor, and as I say, just pushing it forwards a little bit and tipping it back seems about right. You're supposed to be able to get the strings uh, straight up and down, not, not at an angle, but you know that's a work in progress for me. I'm still trying to find the best way to get comfortable. So just to demonstrate the uh, sharpening levers, there's a C, red string, C, put the lever up, and it's C sharp. And here's an F, blue string, and I put the lever up, and it becomes uh, F sharp. As you push the lever up, there's a tiny groove in here, and the, the groove, the string goes into the groove, and, and it just basically tightens the string to give you that higher pitch. Very smooth action, they all work really well. This stick around the back is adjustable, I mean, I've got it at this height, um, and it's got felt, by the way, I don't know if you can see, to stop, so you don't scratch the harp to pieces. And um, you can move it up and down. At the moment I've got it here, I may move it a little bit. I'm guessing this scratch was done from uh, person not knowing how to use the thing properly anyway. Uh, we'll see how that goes. If you've got a harpsicle that's later than 2012, these four eyelets are bigger and there's a reason for that. Um, the reason is that you can change these bottom four strings for, uh, for I think they're steel strings, um, which obviously don't flap around so much as the nylon monofilament strings do and give you a different sound. Um, that's uh, an option that you can go for. So you can buy a set of strings and those bottom four, but you need a, you need a later version of the instrument. Uh, I think versions before 2012 uh, cannot accommodate those strings because they, they just won't go through. Um, so anyway, let's play the, the, the strings so you can hear it. So we've got bottom C, and then we've got D, and so forth. string there. High string there is the G of course. Very very high pitched string. So 
So it's, I think it's a really nice sounding instrument. I mean, Jenny is, the minute I started playing, she said, that sounds really lovely. And compared to my funny little thing that I had last week, it's uh, a much, much better instrument, of course. The amazing thing about it when I, when I got it was uh, that it was actually pretty well in tune. Um, if you don't know, you obviously have to tune a harp. And uh, the way you tune it is, um, on this particular harp, it's all done on this left-hand side. So you have um, this key, wrench, I think that some people call it, which has obviously got a, a hollowed out bit there for going over these uh, tuners. And basically you tighten or loosen these, like you just would on any uh, stringed instrument, to tune the thing up. But actually, um, it was pretty well in tune. I did a bit of tweaking yesterday and it seems to have stayed in tune pretty well. So it's obviously um, a pretty good instrument. Most harps and they're brand new, they take a few weeks to settle down. Obviously this isn't brand new, so it's had a chance to settle down. But uh, no, I was very I was very pleased with that. Not, not that it's a problem for me, I can tune things, but it was just nice not to have to spend hours and hours getting the thing in tune. So let's just play you twinkle, just the, uh, just the tune, get an idea of what it sounds like, uncluttered. When I was playing that the other day, I was positioning my thumb two strings up from the actual string I was uh, sounding to get some purchase, but having watched a few other videos, you don't appear to have to do that. Notice I've got some problems with buzzing as I'm uh, replaying the note, and there's obviously a way around that, I'm guessing. Anyway, let's see if we can put in the, uh, the other hand. Now, of course, now I've got more strings, um, I can get a better harmony, I can go lower. to the night I wanted to, which is that um, note of E. I'm going to do the next bit now. play the same thing in octave lower so you can hear the, the, the lower register of the instruments. Obviously these strings I didn't have on the other harp so this is lovely to be able to do this. Right, big problem I've got at the moment is my eyesight. I'm wearing my reading glasses but I'm struggling to focus. It's, it's kind of a weird length. Maybe it's I need something plain behind this side. I don't know but I'm struggling. Take my glasses off I can't see it at all so <laughs> I just have to persevere. I'm sure there's a way around it. So I'm struggling with a few ergonomics here. Um, I'm, I can feel my feet coming up onto the, the, the balls of my feet. So obviously I'm not comfortable. I can feel the heart tipping forward a bit. So maybe, and then the books say don't lean back in the chair. So the trouble is if I lean forward, the heart tips forward. Maybe, maybe it's not far enough forward on my legs. I've got very long um, legs. So maybe I just need to get it you know, a bit further forward than that. This is very early days, like I say. So. You know, um, once I've got the, as I say, the ergonomics sorted out, I feel comfortable and I feel like things are not going to move around. And this eyesight thing, and see, already having moved the heart a bit further down my legs, uh, my focusing appears to be a bit better. See, trouble is, once the string vibrates, it messes your vision up. So you're looking at a vibrating string instead of a, like a solid object. That's quite hard coming back to it. Hopefully, on my next vlog, I will have. Uh, 
got comfortable with the instrument. So please excuse the terrible playing today. Uh, I feel like I've gone backwards. Of course, this instrument is very different to the other little thing. It's going to take a lot of getting used to. Um, but I'm very grateful to, um, well, first of all, to Frank for all his encouragement and to Tiffany Schaefer in the US there, who's uh, given me uh, loads of encouragement and uh, been in contact with me constantly throughout this process. And I'm going to learn um, some tunes from her excellent tutorials. If you haven't um, checked her out, uh, I'll put a link to her videos uh, on this video. Thank you very much for watching this vlog. Hopefully I'll be much improved by next time I see you. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.